Hello again. Um, I want to take a minute and talk about an experience that uh, my wife and I, we were doing a class together, training a class together uh, in the D.C. area. We were out in the suburbs, right? We were doing it in a Montessori school. And we, and in the D.C. area, I don't know if the, the public transportation out in the suburbs is not very good. Who was in the class were some people from the FDA, the governmental group. And there was a secretary to one of my clients who'd never done work with me. And uh, she did it because she had an educational budget. She met me briefly in the office of her boss and said, I'm going to give it a shot. Well, as oft times happens, uh, she became offended by me. Now, when I do my class self-actualization, I'm obliged to be me. I like to swear. I like to tell jokes. I like to make people laugh, whatever the cost. And uh, at one point, yeah, whether I'm laughing with you or at you is oftentimes not your choice, but it could be, I think. And then I told a joke, and this young lady stormed out of the class, and uh, then there she was out in the hallway uh, being offended and stewing in her stuff, I'm sure, and I don't know what else she was doing, but at one point I said to my wife, why don't you come see where she is? You know, she's stuck out there, um, you know. It's got to be worse than being in here. No matter how bad I am, being in her head with her has got to be worse than being in here with me. And so my wife brought her back in, uh, and she spent the rest of the day. And then we, that night, one of the reasons I do my work is because I go to this place that I don't understand, that doesn't make any sense to me, that's refreshing and enjoyable, but absolutely doesn't make any sense to me. So I was out in those states of blissful unawareness, and... I said to my wife, oh, oops, wait a minute, what did you say to that girl to get her, that woman, to come back into my room? So she was pretty offended, and she said, well, I told her the truth. Now, when I'm out in an area of absolute freedom, where my mind doesn't exist, one of the things I'm real curious about is, what is true? Right? What, what is the truth? Right? And when she said she told this woman the truth, I became so excited. I said, holy shit, what is that? And she said, well, you know, I told her that um, her prejudices and her judgments are standing between her and her freedom. And I said, well, how would you know that? And it was a real question. I really didn't see how she had made those two, you know, love is blind, God is love, therefore Ray Charles is blind. It seemed like that to me. And so I said to her, how do you know that? And she said, well, it's a truism. And I said, I... What if, what if the only way for her to get to her own sense of spiritual freedom is through her judgments and criticisms? And my wife said, that's not possible. I said, it has to be possible. It has to be possible for people to get there. They have to be able to get there because there's no specific route there because you don't agree with it. And so we laid in bed and we got laughing, almost hysterical laughing, when my wife finally popped out into the area where I was where she saw, wait a minute, I did tell her something. It was the truth at the time, but it wasn't necessarily the truth. It's not necessarily the truth that people have to do things a certain way in order to get, in fact, they have to do it their way. And their way may not agree with you, and you may not agree with theirs, but what you have to do is you have to let them find their way there. Now, I'm going to continue the story because it figures into when Nicole's book was written, uh, some things that we found out, we learned when she wrote her book. Uh, her book is Mom Has Fun, rule number one. It's been written in German and English. Uh, she has her own website, and oddly enough, www.momhasfun or www.rulenumberone.com.